Hey, good evening, folks. Welcome to my garden. Let's talk gardening. How's that sound? I'm M Live Chief Meteorologist Mark Torregrossa. Thanks for joining me on what I'm calling Garden Talk. We'll give this a try. Hey, you know how they have all kinds of fancy things in the TV over here, the rundown of what's coming up? This is my low-tech rundown for you. I got all kinds of stuff. We're going to talk about annual flowers, deadheading, not the Grateful Dead. Uh, fertilizing, should you fertilize your tomatoes now or is it too late? Should you stake your tomatoes? Um, know your weeds. We're going to talk about that. A um, little bit of safety precautions, I guess. And if you have any questions or comments, I can see you. Yeah, I can see Jay Brown. Thanks for watching. And Joanne, Joan Fox, good evening. And Larry DeJong, hopefully I'm saying that correctly. Good evening to you. So if you got any questions or any comments or any suggestions, always learning things from fellow gardeners. Uh, so let's get to it. Um, we're going to talk about, hey, I'll show you a few of the things that I got going on here. I love seeds. I mean, I think seeds are just the most amazing thing in the world. You know, you plant a little acorn and it turns into a white oak that lives hundreds of years or any kind of oak. So I got some uh, collards started, some dill, uh, some cilantro, and uh, some broccoli started here. I'm going to talk about that here in just a second. But on my rundown list, let's get to the garden here, all right? So here we go. All right. So first thing, remember to deadhead. Yes, deadhead. You know, sugar magnolia, blossoms burning, heads all empty, and I don't care. So... You got to take the dead ones off because why do you plant these things for blossoms? And fortunately here in Michigan, we are having a lot longer falls. So you're going to want to get those off so that the new ones can come. All right. Now we talk about fertilizing. Okay. Uh, these little plants and all kinds of plants. Now, most everything needs fertilizer, fertilizer, fertilizer. Hey, good evening, April Murray and Sandy Lowersdorf. Thanks for joining me. This is MLive Chief Meteorologist Mark Torregrossa here out in my garden. And we're talking about stuff. So that's right, Eric. Yeah, I'm a little bit of a deadhead. Not like, you know, go across the country in a in a Volkswagen bus, but you know, occasionally. All right, so what I want to show you is that, you know, things like this in the starters, in the starting seed, that's like eating rice cakes all day long. So I like to take a liquid fertilizer and fertilize these kind of things. Uh, one word of advice, remember on the liquid fertilizer, you want things to be fairly dry so that the roots are ready for it. You don't want to put this liquid fertilizer on and then soak them down with other water. It just soaks right through. Fish emulsion is a great one also. And you know, a lot of people ask me, what is my favorite watering device, watering the sprinkler head on the end of the hose? This one right here, cheap. And I'll tell you what, it does a great job versus the one that has the jet and the shower and the full and the blast and the, all those things. This does a great job. By the way, right here, sage that I planted by seed, oh, about mm, two months ago. I've been babying them. I just put them in the ground after we started getting rain. And I'm going to have sage for Thanksgiving for the stuffing, yes. Hey, good evening, Brian Brown. Who's out there gardening? Let's see some pictures, if you can do that. Let's let's do that. All right, now, let's go over to the vegetable garden. And, oh, I may not be able to go too far because poor wireless connection. I used 511 fish emulsion this year. Jennifer Aaron, how did that do? How is that doing? I know fish emulsion is a great fertilizer. 
I used that when I was younger. All right, so should you fertilize tomatoes now or is it too late? Remember the tomatoes, at some point, all of these plants, their goal is to do one thing and that is produce seed to continue, right? So if you fertilize, you're gonna continue the greenery growing on tomatoes. So I would say you gotta be done now and you want them to starve. You want them to think, oh no, I've gotta make seeds. And how do they make seeds? They make seeds by making tomatoes. So hopefully you've been fertilizing through when you first planted them, then hopefully you fertilize them with a blooming fertilizer uh, a month or so ago, maybe another one, and hopefully you're done now and let them starve. I often get pictures from people and they say, look at my tomatoes, they're eight feet tall, isn't that great? Well, I know that an eight foot tomato doesn't yield, tomato plant does not yield a lot of tomatoes. You gotta starve them some. So I would say be done with uh, tomato fertilizer for now. Should you stake tomatoes? We'll try to get over here and I'll show you a couple of examples here. Okay, so, that is, let me see if I can get over there without losing my Wi-Fi. I forgot to disconnect it and go by the um, cell phone signal. So this is a Roma tomato. Okay. All right, so that's a Roma tomato. That is what's called a determinant. That means it only sets out a certain number of blooms, and then those are all going to ripen. So that one, it does pretty good on the ground. Yeah, you can get some rod if they lay on the ground, but they seem to do pretty good on that. Now, one over here is a big boy tomato. That is an indeterminate, meaning that it continues to bloom. So those get pretty tall, and I probably should have staked those, but I didn't. But they'll still produce. And here's, here's the dirty little secret, okay? Tomatoes don't want to be staked. An unstaked tomato will produce more tomatoes. You won't have as good a quality tomatoes, but they will produce more tomatoes. That's the way they want to naturally grow. When you stake them, you'll get lesser tomatoes, but they will be nice ones. All right, next thing. It's the battle of every gardener, right? The weeds. Hey, good morning or good evening, everybody. Who's out there gardening? Let's 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 hear some chatter. Let's. I don't know. I think you can put some pictures in this give it a try uh, we're going over some weather uh tips and we're going over some gardening tips here i'm, I'm live chief meteorologist mark torregrosa know your weeds okay it's always a battle hey it says i can bring laura uh on camera i don't know how to do that so i I don't want to mess it up just yet. I'll practice later on. But that would be kind of cool. If somebody had a garden they were walking around in, uh, know your weeds. It's always a battle. The main thing you want to do in winning the war is keep the weeds from going to seed. Why? Next year, obviously, you have a whole bunch more uh, weed seeds if you let them go to seed now. So, for example, last weekend we had a wedding and... So we're going to be gone for three days and the seeds, the weeds are just about ready to go to seed. I got to do an all out assault. I pulled what I could and cleaned that up. And then the areas where I couldn't, yes, I had to grab, uh, I had to grab the weed wick, weed whacker and whack those down so they didn't go to seed. And I do use Roundup occasionally, not on my food stuff, but where I can use it a little bit. And in fact, you can see that I have a, a bad crabgrass problem in part of this garden. And I said, hey, I cannot pull all of that before we get back and it's gonna go to seed. So I'm gonna hit it with Roundup and I did. And you can see now it's dead. And by the way, if you see weeds like this after you've sprayed it with Roundup, you can go ahead and weed whack it right down because they are dead and they are not going to come back. Uh, safety precautions, always use the safety precautions when using these. Now you've seen these commercials where, you know, did you get cancer from using Roundup and stuff like that? Um, I guess they've proven that it can happen, but you know, if you take the proper precautions, 
by limited use first off, um, and then also by chemical resistant boots. I have some uh, gloves and wash the gloves and the clothes as soon as you get done. The minimal use that we will use them, uh, Jennifer Aaron says my green bell peppers and banana peppers were huge. Okay, that's on the fish emulsion. The fish emulsion fertilizer has all of the things that the plants need. Remember when they used to tell you, you are what you eat? Plants are what they eat and fish eat everything. So they have everything. They have nitrogen, phosphorus, potash. They have all of the minerals in them. And when they decompose and go into the soil, sometimes it's not too pretty smelling, but the plants pick those up and you've got yourself a healthy bell pepper or whatnot. Uh, so I was on Roundup and, you know, using the safety, use it judiciously, cracks in the sidewalk, um, fence lines, stuff like that, uh, but use the safety precautions. I've seen TV commercials and it just makes me flip my lid. Uh, a, like one of the biggest brands out there uh, with a person putting down uh, what do you call it? Uh, weed and feed. You know, that is fertilizer plus chemicals that kill the weeds. And in the picture, the guy is putting him down in flip flops. No, <laughs> no, 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 no. Okay, here's why. Uh, we have skin that absorbs stuff. You know, our, our most absorbable skin is just kind of in the midsection of your body, if you know where I'm going. Second most absorbable skin, the tops of your feet. So you want to have, you don't want to have your tennis shoes on and then go in the house and you don't want to have flip flops on when you do this. You want to have good chemical resistant boot. I wouldn't say rubber boot because that can absorb the stuff. Okay, let's see. Boy, did you know that you were going to get all of this? Okay. All right. Um, okay, a couple of last points. You know, there are a lot of microclimates in your yard. So let's, let's go take a look. And that's the case here. Um, you know, I got a spot over here. We got trees, we got shade. So it doesn't get as much sun as what you'd think. But you go down, you know, you go down here. Um, and you get out into this region and it's a lot hotter. The house radiates the sun, the heat. Hey, good evening, Paul Campbell. And then we get down into here and we get some tomatoes and we actually get some better tomatoes, uh, you know, and you can grow things like hibiscus in Michigan, most definitely. Uh, but you got to take it in by September and give it to a friend that winters in Florida and they'll take it down. And maybe if they are a good gardener, they'll bring it back when they come back up in May or June or something like that. So remember, a lot of microclimates in your yard. Some spots are cold. Some spots are hot. Some spots are wet. Some spots are dry. And a plant may do well in one spot and not in another spot. And that is my last point for you. This is the time of the year to sit back and look at everybody else's stuff and see what you like uh, and see what you don't like for next year. Take some notes, put them in a journal. Don't store them in your phone. Write them by hand with a pencil. A colored pencil or something like that who knows what it is but definitely a good time of the year to take notes as you're driving around wow i like that plant what is that plant um you know stuff like that hey wow that was great sweet corn what variety was that sweet corn neighbor so you'll know what you want to do for next year so there it is there's my little talk. I was hoping some of you would have a lot more comments and suggestions and whatnot, but this is the inaugural garden talk with the camera, right? 
So, thanks for joining me. I'm M Live Chief Meteorologist Mark Torregrossa. Hopefully, your garden has had some nice rain here recently, and hopefully, late August and September will be very bountiful in your vegetable garden. They usually are here in Michigan, and you got to admit, there's nothing like a Michigan tomato. There's nothing like an ear of corn right out of the garden here in Michigan. Those tomatoes from Florida and Arizona and California, nah. They don't cut it. They don't grow them in the right kind of soil like we do here. So have yourselves a great rest of the gardening season. I'll be weighing in. Uh, next thing I'm going to do, I write some stories called Garden Talk. So kind of search that. M Live Garden Talk. And you'll see my stories. One coming up next week. What do you do if you had a lot of tomatoes and a lot of cucumbers? Uh, we make gazpacho here at the Torre Grossa residence. What is gazpacho? It's like a chilled tomato soup, and it's really, really good in the summer. So thanks for joining me. We'll see you back here tomorrow morning talking weather too. Bye.